You know, I've told my kids this. Uh, in all my life of doing this, working with salespeople and broadcasters and covering athletes, men and women, um, the number one trait of successful people isn't where you went to college. You don't have to go to the Ivy League. It's not your contacts on your LinkedIn. It's not what it is. The number one trait of successful people, I'm absolutely sure of it, is resilience. Because everybody steps in it. Everybody fails. Everybody gets benched. Everybody has a bad weekday month here. Everybody. The all-time greats do. Resilience. Tenacity. And there was a moment yesterday as Caitlin Clark became the all-time leading scorer in men's and women's basketball, a great player for Iowa. She was fighting for a loose ball on the floor, and she kind of pushed an Ohio State player. She got a little feedback, pushback on social media, and I loved it. And I thought, that's exactly it. That, that's tenacity, resilience. She's feisty. Nobody that's great at anything lacks that. And, and I, I got to tell you something. One of the reasons college, women's college basketball to me is much more watchable than 20 years ago is this. It's a little edgier. It's a little tougher. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, people taking sides. I like that in my sports. Edge equals intrigue. Edge equals eyeballs. And I think it's a great commodity. I think it's a great trait. Yes, Caitlin Clark can shoot. But Steph Curry also threw his mouthpiece into the crowd. <laughs> Steph Curry can be petty and can be feisty and can talk trash. And I'm sorry, I like it. Find me all the humble all-time great players. At some point, you lose. You get pushed around. There's a loose ball. Caitlin Clark's going to go into pro women's basketball and be double teamed and face older women, and they're going to be bigger, and they're going to push her around, and she'll be just fine. And I even women's college basketball coaches now have an attitude. I like that, too. I really do. You know, it, the best women's basketball player I've ever seen in my life, I saw her live once, was Maya Moore. And I remember it was the first time I watched the women's basketball player, and I'm like, oh, yeah, she could play men's Division I basketball. <laughs> she's got a total attitude. She's cocky. She pushes. She's, she's feisty. She, she had a very aggressive game. And I see little bits and pieces of that with Caitlin Clark, and I really like it. And I think the women's game's got an edge to it now, and uh, I think it's, it's a good watch. And, I, and I, was, I didn't feel that way 20 years ago. I felt like there was a massive separation. Men's game is more vertical, a lot more slam dunking and that stuff. But uh, she's an all-time great player. I didn't ever watch Pete Maravich play. My takeaway when I looked at all the numbers this weekend is that Caitlin Clark, I know how much Caitlin Clark scores, right? And she's been doing this for like three years. Pete Maravich must have been something because he played without a three-point shot, and he set the record in three seasons. So tip of the cap for Pete Maravich, who I never saw play, but had to be unbelievable. You know, I always said, the player in sports that I never watched that I wish I would have was Sandy Koufax, who they say is the best pitcher ever, but it was just before my time. Add Pete Maravich to that. And congrats to Caitlin Clark. Not a surprise. Oh, again, I think she should be a great WNBA player. I don't know the comp she has because obviously I follow NFL more, NBA more. But I would say this. It's not just her ability to shoot or Steph Curry's ability to shoot. It's the ability, uh, ability to be resilient and have tenacity and be tough and push back because pro sports, she's going to get doubled and pushed and screened hard and coached against. And it's that resilience that will live on and make her a star. J Mac with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the herd line news. Speaking of stars, how about that guy, LeBron James, Colin <laughs> decent record. Uh, hitting a new mark of 40,000 career points on Saturday against the Nuggets. Well, he was good. He was excellent. Um, after the game, he said, I don't like the Eagles this some year. Some regression coming? I, yes. I mean, we, first of all, you and I both predicted there would be regression off the Super Bowl appearance. We both said they'll pull back. We were both right. I think they'll do it again. Well, we and, they'll, and, they'll, dumb. and they reinvent pretty quick, but I, I think they're. I think the division's going to get better. We we did look dumb when they were 10-1, and one, but we knew it was smoke and mirrors. Anybody who watches they football were, sees this. A lot were, of luck box stuff. A lot of late game surges yeah. to win. And then, you know, reality set in. I'll say, didn't they, um, remember when they added Kevin Byard? Everybody said, ooh, way to shore up the secondary. It they didn't just, help at they're all. They're dumping him. Or he's been dumped. Um, that didn't work. It feels like the defensive line's getting old. Um, they don't Lane get Johnson's the, they don't, aging. They don't get the pass rush, and they have a bad secondary. And in a passing league, that is a bad combo. Yeah. They have to hit. They got to do a Kansas City Chiefs. They got to hit in a couple corners in the draft. I, 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 
I kind of want to push back a little on your Shane Steichen, like, made Jalen Hurts. You didn't say that, but you were into me. He certainly helped his productivity, his consistency. That's indisputable. So, it is, so, it is, okay, so what is the ceiling for Hurts without Steichen? Can I don't he be know. a top five quarterback? Not from what I've seen. Top 12, yes. But again, if I get three well, years of you difference. and I get mad, great mad. Do you well, think as Pert- a rookie, come on. He was a second-round pick. Like uh, I think he was second. They didn't expect I'm not disputing. Right. I think his intangibles are great. I want to see more tangibles. Pocket. Fewer giveaways. He's, last couple of years, it's felt like he's been hurt. Well, I wonder. Uh, uh, are the Bush push... Or, sorry, the tush brotherly shove, whatever they call it. Is that stuff taking a toll? Like, well, beat not, up? Like I know he squats yeah, 600 I mean, pounds. A, a big component to that, 50% of that, was the center who just retired. So maybe that's eliminated now. Um, I wouldn't think it would be as effective. I mean, we saw Cam Newton's career. It was, like, done because he was just beat up physically. Could not last into his 30s. Mm. I don't think Hurts has taken that pounding, but... he's He looks... hasn't Haven't you thought the last couple of years, multiple games... We said it last year and the year before. He's not 100%. Well, I'd say this past year. Uh, two years ago, he was basically the MVP. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. I, I would say regression, but are they a 500 team? Or? Yes. Yeah. No, I don't think they're going into the cellar. I just think Washington with that cap space and the new staff is going to be significantly better. And I think Dallas just has too much talent not to be good. And I think uh, I think it's going to be a tougher division. And I see things I don't I hear things and see things I don't like. OK, so uh, wrapping up the NFC East, you like Washington. I think Should we Dallas. Be betting? And Washington are at the top. Philadelphia battles to the end for second, finishes third. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.